there will be many people watching this today who spent many years working in the National Health Service or in the wider care sector, and many others who will have great friends or members of their family who have been looked after. Over the last few years, I've been a patient in the NHS, and I've also worked in the NHS for the last 12 years. And we know that at its best, the NHS and the wider care sector in England is fantastically good. We've all heard of hospitals like the Marsden and Great Ormond Street. We've all heard of great academic healthcare centres like Cambridge and Imperial. But there are two other names that I want to leave with you today, Mid Staffordshire Hospital and Winterbourne View. Two hospitals where we saw a level of care, and in one instance, a level of physical abuse of residents that is completely unacceptable. And I think we all know, if we're honest, that there is huge variation throughout the care sector in England, and it's up to the CQC to stamp that poor care out. There can never be a 100% guarantee against failure, but we can be much, much better. And David Bean is going to set out later in this video how we're going to do that. There are, I think, four key principles that will underline everything that we do in the CQC. The first is that we will exercise judgment. We will not tick the box and miss the point. Secondly, we will always involve users and patients and other what we call users by experience in everything that we do. They will accompany us on our inspections. Thirdly, we will have fewer regulations and less red tape. The last thing we want to do is to burden hospitals and care homes with unnecessary bureaucracy. But finally, and lastly, and actually most importantly, CQC will be independent. We'll be independent of the system. We'll be independent of politics. We will be unequivocally on the side of the patient and the user. David, I just want to start really by asking you um, if you could summarise what the changes are that you're making in, in the strategy that, that's been published. What the strategy is doing is setting out what our direction is over the next three years, responding to the comments and criticisms we've had from the Health Select Committee, the Ombudsman and others, and really picking up on the recommendations that uh, Robert Francis made in his recommendation. So this year what we'll do is we'll introduce a Chief Inspector of Hospitals, um, we'll change the way that we inspect hospitals, we'll have bigger inspection teams that spend longer in hospitals, those teams will comprise doctors and nurses and other experts and importantly they'll include people that we're calling experts by experience, people that have used services and then they'll make a judgment about the quality of those services. We'll also introduce a rating and that will rate every hospital in this country and indeed every care home uh, and we'll develop that rating over uh, the next 12 months. So it's almost a league table for care? Well, we're being careful not to express it as a league table, but inevitably, uh, when people benchmark, they see where they are compared to others, and they use that to improve. And I think one of the things that we've uh, had too little concentration on is, uh, is what works well and who are the high performers, and we need those high performers to pull through those poor performers and we will focus on those that perform poorly and take action as we see appropriate where we see poor services. So we need both the focus on poor performers and the pull through of those high performers and the ratings will allow us to make that absolutely clear and transparent and then uh, hospitals and others will have to not only account to us and to their boards but also to the local communities for how well they're performing. We're going to look at five key things. Uh, our service is safe, our service is effective, our service is caring, do they promote people's dignity, are they compassionate, uh, are they well led uh, and our service is responsive and we think those five things are what matters most to people. Well, care homes, I, I mean that that is a huge thing. You're dealing with some of the most vulnerable people there in society, some people who are at the most vulnerable stages of their lives. Yes we are and uh, I think you're right to identify the particular issues of people who by virtue of their circumstances are very vulnerable, people with learning disabilities, people with advanced dementia, people who in effect can't speak for themselves. And it's really important that we work with 
uh, groups that represent those people with their advocates, with their family members to listen to those people to ensure that care is being delivered. We've got over a million people with uh, learning disabilities in this country in services. Uh, a number can't speak for themselves. We know we've got about 800,000 people with dementia set to rise to about 1.2, 1.4 million over the next few years. And 80% of people in care homes are, have got dementia. So it's absolutely critical that our inspections are effective. We know that in care homes, the quality of the leader of the care home the manager of the care home is absolutely critical to the quality of services that people provide. And where services deteriorate, it's very often because there isn't a manager or a home is poorly led. So investing in the leadership and management of care homes and for us to inspect that is absolutely critical. But how, how will you carry out these inspections? Will they be on the spot inspections? Will you warn people that you're coming or? Unannounced inspections will be a critical part of what we do and currently in both hospitals and care homes uh, over 95% of our inspections are unannounced. Uh, we turn up uh, without notice and uh, announce ourselves uh, first thing in the morning, uh, occasionally on a weekend or in an evening when we go back to look at particular issues so we'll continue to do that. But what we are absolutely clear about is we need people to give us their views about services. They are the eyes and ears of our community communities in the terms of the way that uh, quality is delivered by health and care. Critically what we want to look at is do hospitals, do care homes listen to their users? It's not only do we listen to what people say but do they and when they listen to them do they change the way that they operate based on what they're told? That's the hallmark of a good high quality service, one that listens to people and then makes changes. Um, how tough will you be if, if you go into a home and it clearly is, is lacking in, in so many ways? How, how tough will you be? We do take enforcement action, we do close homes down and we do take prosecutions where we've seen abuse. Uh, and interestingly over the past 12 months uh, we have a power to fine uh, services care homes and we've used that on three occasions now. So we need to look at the sanctions that we've got available to us and use those uh, much more strategically, much more intelligently as a way of actually uh, laying down a line in the sand over which people should not cross. We need to be absolutely unambiguously clear about what's unacceptable. It is a huge remit though, isn't it? I mean, hospitals, dental surgeries, GPs, care homes, care at home, that is a huge remit. Is, is this all achievable? It's a hugely responsible role that we play. I think there's not a more important job uh, in the public sector in England than promoting the interest of people that use services and ensure they get access to services which are safe and high quality, compassionate and effective. So I'm delighted to be able to uh, lead this organisation at this time with David Pryor, the chair, and I'm optimistic that staff in CQC are supportive of these changes and we look into the future uh, with a lot of appetite. There is a perception that the CQC is perhaps on the side of the service providers rather than on the side of the users. How are you going to change that? Well, we need to be unambiguously clear, and I'd like to do that now. We are on the side of people that use services. Our purpose is to ensure that services are high quality, safe, effective and compassionate and that those services improve. And they do that in the interest of people that are using them. That's why we exist. That's what our purpose is and that's what we're going to do.